So we're going to use the rear, new rear spacers we've made up, fit into the top of the cradle, bolt in. So we're going to do them in the rear. There's already trial laser springs in the back. Then we're going to use adjustable camera arms that we weld up. Front, we're going to use 25mm bolt on spacers and SZ lower forks. So they're about 23mm longer than your standard size fork. Which is jack the car, of course, take the tire off, jack stands. And then I've used my other jack here. It goes in under there, take the bolt out of there, out of the outer lower control arm to remove the spring. So then all you gotta do is just, oh, you drop the sway bar too, both mounts of the sway bar. You can see that under there. So you drop in both sides, so you don't have to remove the actual sway bar. And then just pull the spring out. And then next, to put our spacers in, we're gonna drop these two bolts off. Both bolts off, both nuts, sorry. And then this slides in like that. So instead of the spring going all the way up there and sitting in there, it's going to come down and sit in here instead. So it's about 45 mil, 40 mil extra lift you're going to get just from that. So that's a plate bolted back in. And then looking at the workshop manual, it says torque them to 108 plus minus 17. So we'll go to 108. And that plate's all done. That's how it works. So then you put your spring seat back in there. And the spring sits back up in there as well. So I'll do that next and then. I gotta undo this bolt here, undo the inner bolt, we'll pull that out and swing, change it for the adjustable one. This tip is to stop squeaky bushes. Take your plumber's Teflon tape, wrap your bush and the inner. So, grease them. I got lots of grease. So that'll stop your squeaky bushes. So that's the adjustable arm in. Now, I'll torque this one up. I'll have to check what the torque setting is. I'll put it on the screen. The inner one is a bit of a pain because you can't get a torque wrench in there. So that one you sort of do by feel. They're normally pretty bloody tight as we found out trying to get it out. But that's the only downside. I'd love to be able to torque it, but you can't get a torque wrench in there. So you do that one by feel. This one will torque to spec. Caliper's back on. Now you'll notice with the brake line, because we're not running extended brake lines at the moment, that bracket used to be there and hook in there. Now, because we want a little bit more travel and we don't want to stretch and pinch the brake line, we leave this unhooked. So it's just a free line. Never had any issues doing that. But eventually we'll look at maybe moving the bracket to give the extension for extra travel. The factory shocks still, we will change these eventually for longer travel ones, but for now that'll be fine. All right, so we're onto the front. 
you gotta unbolt the struts. This side you gotta two 10 mil bolts. Out comes this. So you can get to your top three shock bolts. This side you take off the airbox lid and then you can get to these three bolts down in there. You pop the top ball joint out. Sway bar link bolt, nut, take that out. Then your brake line, unclip that. You gotta undo the uh, ABS speed sensor just from the fork. Your lower bolt here. Then I undo the fork, these four bolts. Then your top bolts. There's only one holding that on there at the moment. And then it's pull your shock out. And we can go from there. And I zip tie this to there because you want to be able to move from side to side to get to those bolts. But you don't want it coming too far back or it'll pop the CV shaft out of the, I don't know what you call it, cup. So that's the shock out. Now we've got to put, so when putting the bolt-on spacers on, so you see how they're lined up now, the studs, they've got to be lined up the same. So when you put the bolt-on spacer on, they change the location of them. So you've got to twist it. So to twist it, you can either use, I've got a hydraulic spring compressor, or you can use the cheaper, nastier spring compressors. And what you've got to do is you've got to take a bit of tension off this top hat to relocate where the studs sit. So we're turning it like that. And then we also got to cut down these the top hat studs because they're too long for the spacer. That's the other nut. Of course, you can't get a socket over that one. That's a 17 mil socket. This is a 15. So you gotta yeah, use the flange nuts. You can get it from Bunnings or any nut and bolt shop. Once you've got the spring compressed, so see the shock's loose, and you should be able to turn this top hat because it's nice and loose. You gotta align these studs in the right place. So see when you look straight down, see how this one's further forward, this one's further back, and this one's further over. So what I do here, it's a bit hard to hold the camera, but I draw on my hand. So this was for the other side, so I've got to do a new one. So I cross out that. So I do a line, mark the front, so this side of the car, and then I know that one's further back, that one's further forward and this one's just off to the side. When you go like that, it's about 10 degrees. I find that I've got the paper with it on, but as long as you do it like that, it'll slip back into the car, not a problem. Next is the forks. So this is a standard. So you get that on the SX, SY, and SY2. Now SZ all drives have longer lower forks as you can see. So there's about 23 mil difference in them. So you get an inch just by putting SZ forks in your older model territories, you're gonna get an inch lift. Next. Hold them in. So it's all bolted back in. Lower fork bolt. The upper fork bolts, four bolts. Now they had blue Loctite on them from factory, so we put a little bit more blue thread block on them. Uh, put the ABS sensor back into the new forks, the brake line, upper bolt, sway bar link. So we're gonna go for a torque them all up now. 
it's 90, 50, 98, and 98 down there as well. But that's why I got it jacked up too, because you want to get it as close to normal right height before you torque everything up. Before I forget, the top nuts, they recommend 35 Newton meters. Do them up, same with the center nut for that, the shocks, they're 30, 35 Newton meters, 35 Newton meters, and then we'll bolt this back on and put the airbox back together. So the front is definitely higher than the back. It's hard to see in the sun. When we dropped the car back down, the back had sagged a lot more. So we were using Lovell's Trailblazer Springs, the comfort ones, so they're not the most heavy duty ones they make, but we haven't been able to find the other ones available anyway, the yeah. constant 300 kg load one. So we went with these, but the problem is, I think these after did. having them in the car, what? They did give 30 mil lift with the car empty. Yeah. Originally. So originally they gave more lift than what the raised King Springs would. But they're a lot softer. But they're a lot softer. And now that the cars had kids and then loaded up and been driven around for a couple of weeks. The trailer. And tow the trailer, they've sagged more. So what we're gonna do now is just take them out and put the raised King Springs in instead. And see once we drop the car down what difference it gives us. But on the other side, our bolt-in spacers that we've made up, they gave us exactly 40 mil of lift. So that's a bolt-in 40 mil lift. So we will end up making more of them. Things brings in. They help. They help level it out a lot better. They got to settle. Dad, where's the monkey? Oh no, down there. Dad's filming. That's how you get rid of the kids. Tell them there's a monkey down the road. So then you can film. The monkey's down there. Down there. So yeah, there's a lot of lift really. I honestly reckon we're probably sitting around. Two I reckon we'd be at least two inches in the front. I reckon we'd be closer to the two and a half, three inches of suspension lift. So we got the bigger wheels to go back on as well. So this bit of the drive isn't exactly rocket science, but, and it isn't the right way to do it, but this is our temporary fix. So I put it on there, on the rim, put the level on there. So we can adjust the rear camber arms. So, spanners, and then you get under the car, and adjust the arm to try and get the camber somewhat right. And then that's fine until you go get a wheel alignment done. So that's it, car done. Swap the wheels over again now. Everyone's seen the wheels the other day. I'm gonna put it on now with the lift. So yeah, all done. Wheels on. I've already made the video showing the wheels and stuff, but the positive now, you look down it, the wheels are still just inside the guard. So yeah, 17 by eight, zero offset. Works pretty good with that lift. Back. We still think we could lift the back another 10 mil, but that's another day.